Hello everybody, Kelly at JustanettaStampAbove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Can I just squeal with excitement here? Today is the first day that our new Stampin' Blends are available. Oh my gosh, I finally got a chance to sit down and play with these gorgeous pens. I am in love and I can't wait to show you some great tips on how to use these for my wait, what? Wednesday tip video. First of all, there's this beautiful brochure that gives you some great steps in here and some fun samples too. You always, you know, we always love samples. There's also a stamp set and a project kit that comes with everything cut and ready for you to stamp and color and blend and put these beautiful cards together. And here is a list of all the products that are available with the Stampin' Blends and some great tips also. So let me get started and show you this cute kit. So here's all my Stampin' Blends. Holy cow. I think we have 26 of them available. Yep, 26. There's 12 exclusive Stampin' Up colors. So is that, that would be 24 because there's two in each color. So you get... A light one and a dark one. This is Bermuda Bay. The cool thing about these, you've got lines here that show you this is a thin tip, this is a thick tip. So you've got a coloring tip in here and you've got a smaller tip that you can do smaller coloring with or writing if you want to. The ends need to snap on. These are alcohol-based markers and the really cool thing about alcohol-based markers is that you can color on just about anything and it'll stay there. You know sometimes how we do like rhinestones and pearls, we color them with Sharpie markers? Well, you can color those with Stampin' Blends and the color will stay on them. Ah, so exciting. So we've got all of our exclusive Stampin' Up! colors that we can color those embellishments with to make them match our projects. So that's super cool. That's just one thing that Stampin' Blends do. Now what's the deal with alcohol markers? Alcohol markers do not leave scribble marks like regular markers. Let me just show you a little sample here. I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock. Now when you go to color with a regular marker, you get scribble marks. And that's why the only thing that I ever color with markers is very small, tiny little things. Like... Let's say I was going to color the stripes on this door. I would use a marker because it's just easier. But other than that, when I'm coloring bigger items, I am using an aqua painter with either ink in the top of the ink pad or you can take your markers and scribble on a stamp case, anything that's non-porous, and pick your color up with an aqua painter. The reason why I do that is because it doesn't leave the scribble marks that you get with regular markers because I really don't like that. That is gone when you use alcohol-based markers because they don't leave those scribble marks. So that's one thing I'm super, super excited about. The other thing is that you can blend and you can lighten. And it all sounds like a lot of work, but it's not. It's super, super simple. So I'm gonna show you that in just a few minutes. But first, I wanted to show you the Color Me Happy stamp set. This is a stamp set, and there's all, you can buy the stamp set or the project kit or both. But the project kit has four great cards in here with four of each in here. So that's a really cool kit. This is a great way to break in your new Stampin' Blends so that you can get some good practice on these kits. And I wanted to show you this kit. I think I'm gonna make a card with it because I have not even opened this up. I cut open the plastic so I could get in there. But you get this instruction sheet and it's got instructions here for each one of the cards. And then it's got some really nice pictures back here kind of helping out with how do you put this card together and what the cards are intended to look like. So this is our kit and I'm just going to peel open, maybe, see if I can get my fingernails in there, there we go. Peel open the plastic here. I guess I need to be a little stronger. Of course it would be good plastic, right? 
Okay, here we go. And I'll show you everything in this awesome little kit. Wow, that's some heavy duty chipboard. I'm gonna keep that for something else. We're gonna get some Baker's Twine here and there's a little roll of gold foil. I think this is washi tape. We've got some cute little tassels here that look like they're pool party and some really pretty sequin stars and circle sequins. Look at these envelopes. Oh my gosh, how cute are they? These are just beautiful gold foil edges on them. Wow, I had no idea. I Seriously, I've not opened this up before. Look at these, they are beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna get the envelopes out of our way. Delicious. You have some die cut starburst gold foil circles. And I think the card that I'm going to make here is going to be this lantern card. So it looks like I need a bigger piece of the white. I'll set these aside. And then it looks like we use a little bit of the washi tape. We're gonna use one of these. Look at these, these are all die cut. So this card kit is super easy to put together and of course you can do anything you want with it but you can also do what is recommended here Get all this out of the way i think we're going to need these these are die cut and stamped already oh look at those those are fancy oh that's for the thank you card oh, beautiful oh this is fun the banner all die cut that's neat, that's the banner that's right here. I'm gonna grab, look at this card, card stock, that's our card bases. I'm gonna grab the striped blue one, and I've got my little banner here, and I'm gonna need one of these lanterns, and I'll need some baker's twine and one of the tassels. So I'm just gonna move the rest of the stuff out of my way here and bring in my piece of cardstock that comes in the kit. Okay, I know that I am using pumpkin pie and pool party. Now this is pool party, this is the darker marker, this is the lighter marker. I've got the darker pumpkin pie and then that's Calypso Coral, we don't want that. Here's Here's the lighter pumpkin pie. That looks like our old cantaloupe crisp, doesn't it? Beautiful color. Now, one thing you need to use with alcohol-based markers is Memento ink. That's a must-have. If you use um, any other black ink pad or if you even stays on, if you use it with the markers, it will bleed. Not, a, not an attractive look at all. Okay, and I see that I'm also going to need this line right here to hang my little lanterns from. So let's get this. Hang tight, I'll be right back. I need to grab a block. Okay, here we go. Get this mounted and ready to roll. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to stamp the lines for my lanterns. I think we're gonna do one right up here, the other line. I think I'll just go right there. And then I've got these other lanterns all mounted I love the little tassel on the ends of them. I've got one here. And we're gonna do one right in the middle. And then here comes the round one. And I think we're gonna stamp that right here and then put that one right over top of it. So look, I kind of messed up a little bit there. I didn't press hard enough, but it'll be okay because we're gonna put the die cut one right over top of it. There we go, I did good on the other one. So we need to let this dry just a little bit. But while we're letting that dry, I'm going to bring in this lantern and I can color this because this was the die cut one. 
and I am going to use the pumpkin pie dark marker and I'm just going to go right around the edge. Now these have really nice pointy tips on them which I love. That lets you get up nice and close to the lines. And then if you happen to go out of the lines, don't worry because guess what? We have a color lifter that can help you erase those little mistakes. You want to make sure when you're putting your markers back in the lid that you're careful, okay? There's a little tube down in there that they fit into. You always want to make sure you hear that snap. Because these are alcohol based, you can't leave them open. Alcohol dries really fast and your markers will dry out if you do that. Now I'm going to bring in the lighter pumpkin pie and I am going to blend the edges so that it doesn't have those scribble marks and it blends it in there really nicely. Now I'm going to come in with the color lifter and I'm just going to pull up a little bit of that color because that gives us a highlight in the middle of our pumpkin. Now you'll find if you get any color that comes on here you can just go like this and color it off. And again be careful and make sure that snaps back in there. Alright this should be dry and ready now so I am going to color my two orange pumpkins here. Now I've heard that people are like well do you have to use the light one first or the dark one first or which one do you use it doesn't matter whatever you want I just tend to go for that dark one I want to do my shading I call it first and then I come in with the lighter one you could do just the opposite it's whatever you're comfortable with And you see how that lighter color, and I'm blending those edges so it's not all scribbly like regular markers that I don't like. I shouldn't say I do like markers, don't get me wrong. It's just that I don't like the scribble marks they leave behind. We've got that nice highlight there. Now I'm going to come in with the pool party. And color these. The other thing I found about coloring with these markers is that it really is easy. Like you don't have to mess around a lot because the tips are nice and big. And do this and now I'm going to bring in my color lifter and I'm going to kind of blend a little bit. Oh my gosh that looks so pretty. That color lifter will also help tone down the lines between the light and the dark and where you didn't put any color too so it leaves that highlight in the middle. I think we need to pop this up on a dimensional. Now this is the back of my lantern. Remember when you're working with these colors they will bleed through to the back so you always want to make sure that you're using a layer that goes on your card not just your card itself because nobody wants to see that in the back. It's not attractive. And here we go. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Here comes our card base. And we're gonna put a little bit of washi tape on here. Oh, this is like tear tape. Look at that. Okay, and this is just going to go down the edge. So I'm going to snip that right here. I'm going to pull the backing off of it. I'm going to cut this little arrow end off. Put this right down the edge. This feels a lot like tinsel that you put on your Christmas tree. It's very thin and flexible. Look at that. That's so cute. Add a little bit of it. Nope, I shouldn't have put that glue on yet because I need to get my baker's twine on there. To put that little tassel in. So we're going to just hang tight with that. 
we'll get out our baker's twine. I'm going to use about this much. I'm going to bring in my adhesive tape runner. It's going to go right across here. So I'm just going to put some tape right here, a little bit of tape right there, and that will hold my baker's twine. So don't put the glue on the back of your layer before you have everything else ready. I jumped the gun on that one. All right, thread this through. So I did, I did something crazy yesterday, you guys. I cut off all my hair. Like, I cut it. I got it. I didn't cut it, but I got it cut super short. So maybe I'll show you my cute little video that I made after I get this video done. At the end, I'll show you my haircut. You can tell me what you think. It, it's drastic. Like, I've never... I don't know. I had my hair cut short like this once before my daughter was born, and she's 20. Three. Maybe she's 22. Oh my gosh, what's the math? 94. She was born in 94, so she is 23. Oh my gosh, I'm a terrible mom, right? All right, here is our cute little card. Notice the highlights in the middle and how easy that was. Beautiful. Now, do you want to see some more projects that I made? I told you I was having a lot of fun tonight. All right. Here comes another one. Now, where did these beautiful images come from here? These came from the Just Add Color Designer Series Paper Pack, and I happen to have one here. These are, it comes 12 by 12. These are just six by 12. But look at all these fun designs. These are on really nice, thick, whisper white cardstock. This is our thicker cardstock. And these are already have images on them to color. So that's where I got this card. I colored this in with the Pool Party, the Rich Razzleberry combo, and the Old Olive combo. And isn't that pretty? Just a Note is coming from Flourishing Phrases stamp set, and I die cut that with the stitched framelits and the oval layering framelits. So that's where that one, do you see what I put on there? Can you see the glimmer in there? I put on the Wink of Stella. Just colored it over my images quickly. Wow, beautiful. All right, there's one card. Here comes another one. Isn't that cute? This uses the um, lighter pool party marker and then the bronze marker. Let me see if I can find that one. The bronze marker looks like soft suede, I would say. So that was a great color for my roofs and window edges on this. And that paper I just showed you is right here in the same paper pack. Isn't that cute? This would be great for a housewarming party or yeah, housewarming party card too. And then I made this one. And again, I added the Wink of Stella to all my feathers. Isn't that pretty? I used the Calypso Coral here with the Bermuda Bay, and I used both the light and dark combinations. And that is right here in that paper. So super fun. Now, I've got one more thing I'd like to show you about these Stampin' Blends. These markers are amazing, okay? You can do some really, really cool stuff with them. Another thing you can do with them. Oh, you know what? I forgot my little celebrate on there. Let me get that stamped. How about we do it right side up? I guess it wouldn't matter because we're just going to glue it on, right? Let's see if I can get it straight. Oh, I did really good. Yay, me. I'm winning today. And we need to put that. I do not have any full dimensionals here, so I am just going to cut up some of my edges. I've showed you guys that showed you guys that before, right? Don't throw your edges away because they are dimensionals. And if you ever run low, you'll be glad you had all those little edge pieces. Here we go. 
I'll leave that hang off a little bit off the side here, just like they do in the picture. Cute, cute, love it. Okay, back to what I'm gonna show you. You can also color on photographs. So I got a couple black and white photographs um, printed today. And this is my daughter Haley. And this is three of her um, good friends from high school. This was back when she was in high school. Remember, she's 23. I did this in black and white so that I can come in here and add a very subtle coloring to the white parts on these girls' jerseys. You've seen pictures before where they have like babies and they, you know, color them a little pink or whatever. But you can color on photographs and it will not destroy them like it would if you were coloring with a regular marker. Let's try a little darker color here and see what we can come up with. Here's our Menasha. Ooh, that's pretty. These are Menasha football jerseys. Go, Blue Jays. Isn't that cool? Okay, I've got another photo. I'll maybe put this in a, on a scrapbook page. Love that, but that little pop of color on these photos is a really neat thing for your scrapbooking. Or you could frame this picture and give it as a gift. That's kind of neat too. I think I'm going to use the dark pink pirouette and look at this gorgeous picture. I I'm in the habit of taking pictures of flowers and then I get them made or I get them printed out and I make them into cards and I give them to my mom. I'm, I'll make up a whole bunch of photo cards and I'll decorate the insides. Isn't that pretty? So I just took that and made these white flowers from this black and white photo pink. Oh, can you hear it squeaking? <laughs> And this is just kind of a neat thing you can do because they're alcohol-based markers. I see I missed a little bit of this flower here. How pretty is that? Now what am I gonna do with this? I have an idea. I've already got a rich Razzleberry card base ready to go here. So I'm going to take this and add some snail adhesive to the back. And I'm going to make a card out of this beautiful photo I took. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Oh, and I got chocolate on this. <laughs> oh well. And I'm just going to put this right over here. Just a note. And I can make up a whole set of these. That little pop of pink in there is really pretty. So what do you think of these Stampin' Blends? I am in love. I love them. I love that there's no scribble marks when you're coloring. I have a promotion for you. Today is the first day that you can order the Stampin' Blends. And I will be giving away a card front size of each of these Just Add Color Designer Series papers to everyone who places a minimum $50 order in the month of November that has Stampin' Blends in it. So you don't have to order all Stampin' Blends, but you have to order something out of the Stampin' Blends, whether it's the actual markers or this cute Color Me Happy stamp set, which you know are, there's gonna be a gazillion ideas with this. It's an exclusive release, so we're all gonna be playing with this. You can order this project kit, and I'll put all the um, numbers on there. If you hop on over to my blog, www.stampabove.com, you're going to find the actual brochure. I will have a link to this brochure on my blog that gives all these great tips, and it has all the item codes here. The cool thing about Stampin' Blends is you can order the light marker, the dark marker, or both of them together. And then you can also order the ivory, bronze, and the color lifter. You can order the entire collection for $121.50. You can also combine the project kit with the stamp set 
for a savings down here. So they've got them bundled and you're saving between $450 and $550 depending on whether you're ordering clear mount or wood mount. And then other supplies that you're going to need if you don't have them is the Memento Black Ink Pad. That's also listed in this brochure. We also recommend Whisper White Thick Cardstock, which is in here. And Stampin' Dimensionals and a fine tip glue pen are you will work great with this kit if you don't have those for putting the little sequins on and the dimensionals for raising up. this lantern and the greeting right here. So all of the items are right here. I'll probably put them in my video too. So there you go. That's my first take on Stampin' Blends. Um, I came away from this going, oh my gosh, I am so happy to have these gorgeous markers. I had a blast coloring these in. They were fun and easy. I love the use of the Wink Estella over top of the colored images. Another thing that I noticed, when you um, stamp a solid image and then put Wink Estella on it, the Wink Estella brush will pick up the color. So if you stamped a red flower, suddenly your brush will be all red. It doesn't do that with these alcohol markers. It does not bleed onto the Wink of Stella brush. So that was really cool. I'm sure you're going to be seeing more projects from me using the Stampin' Blends. I think I'm in love. But here's just a few great ideas and some tips on how to use them. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. Just pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com and I will be happy to send you catalogs if you don't have them. And to find the link directly to my blog post for these projects and all the item codes, that I'm gonna post with this video. Go to, go to YouTube if you're not there already and underneath my video is um, a place that says see more. When you click on that, it'll bring up all the information. You can click on any of the items to go right to my store or you can click on my address under that see more to go right to the blog post that has all of this information in it. Thanks so much you guys for stamping with me. Hang tight. I'm going to throw up the video of my new haircut because it's pretty funny. Not the haircut, the video. <laughs> and I'm, I'm getting used to the hair. I feel like I have my hair in a ponytail because it's not touching my neck. And today when I went to put my sweater back on, I always grab my sweater and kind of turn it around to pull off those long hairs that, you know, get on your clothes. And I thought, I'm not going to have any of these anymore. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Let me know what you think of my new haircut. Check out the Stampin' Blends. If you don't have a demonstrator, I really appreciate your orders. That's what keeps these free videos coming. Don't forget to click down here and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything coming up. You guys have a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. So, guess who got a haircut?